Hi, I'm Jacob, and I'm going to give feedback to Eugene on his winning submission to the March Anim Challenge competition, specifically using Twigs the Cowboy Rig. Congratulations, Eugene. This shot is freaking awesome. It really is. It's really cool. And for a while, I struggled to come up with stuff to talk about because I think it's all really awesome. It's really fun. And so what we're going to do is focus on polish. There's not a whole lot of things to rearrange or ideas to sell differently. It's working. It's funny. So let's just focus on the spacing and how we work on those multiples or the smears or get the, the root to feel heavier or the spacing of the head. There's a lot of polish tricks to cover to make it feel even more refined. And so that's what I want to focus on. It's already cool. Where do we go from here? Let's polish it. All right, as we dive in, it's worth mentioning again that I really like this shot. I think it's super fun. It makes me laugh every time. I especially love the way that he, you know, yanks his hat down in that big changeup. It's funny and it works. And I don't have too many major changes to suggest. I don't have a lot of feedback on like performance changes. There's like two things that are more performance change notes that are very minor because the rest I think is working really well. And so most of my feedback is going to be not concerned on um, rearranging things or changing the performance to, to sell something stronger. It's mostly going to be about taking what you have and pushing it that extra bit, that extra 10 or 15% of polish, that extra attention to, de to detail to make it feel really refined. And, um, and that's just because everything else is working. So this is going to be about how do we take this to the next stage? Where do we polish from here? And I think that will be helpful, not only for this shot, but for, for anyone else watching it that might be able to look for new things in their own work um, and and make use of this going forward and like how to, to further polish a shot, I guess. So let's jump into it. Um, starting at the very beginning, I'm gonna lay out the two things that I think could be a little stronger performance-wise. One is the initial contrast in the changeup of the, the first moment. And right here, to play this for you, that first bit, right there. So what he does is he snaps and snaps. There's a snap to the front and then a snap to throw. And so both of those things feel very equal in importance and timing. I found your reference online. Uh, I posted it to social media. Hope you don't mind, I tried to screen capture it so we could talk about it for a second. In the reference, what I think is really awesome, and it's only there for a couple of frames, but there's this slow turn, and I think that's really cool. This slow turn adds a lot of contrast to that quick snap of the throw. And if you were to throw that into here, so that instead of having him do a quick snap to the front, if it's more of a slow turn and then chucks the gun, I think that adds a lot of real cool contrast. Um, it's, it's a different texture. It's, it's kind of musically different, right? And in a lot of the way that I think of texture is in terms of music. And like big, fast crescendos and then slow, calmer moments. Choosing when to sharpen things and when to draw things out a little bit more for contrast. And so in this case, drawing this out in the beginning would add a lot of really cool texture and contrast to that first flip of the gun. Uh, and so I would suggest just making that turn slower. Take a little bit more time on it. Make it a little bit smoother. Make him kind of see the room and then chuck the gun uh, rather than snap and then snap again, just because that feels repetitive. All right, so that's one. That's a very small change, and I think that's my one biggest performance note. The other thing is also very small and very easy to fix, is just that when the bug enters the frame, I'm totally all over the place. My eyes are going everywhere. There's a lot of things happening at once. And I think it might be strengthened if you really make sure that we're looking at the bug on its entrance as best we can. Now there's not a great time to do it. I don't think that I have like the perfect solution, but I know that right now my eyes are everywhere. So I want to make a suggestion. So right now what's happening is the gun gets flipped up and then he does this kind of motion real fast, flips down, and then the gun is coming down while the bug enters. And so my eyes are kind of and I'm not sure where to look and I'm missing a bunch of things, I'm sure. And I'm also not getting all of it. So I didn't even get that the bug came in, I think, the first couple times. 
uh, I don't start to notice it until around here, which by the way is working really nicely. So I wanna cover that too. But my suggestion might be, um, oops, is just to, what if we had the bug enter after the gun lands and while his back is turned? And I know that it's, maybe it wouldn't work as well, or maybe it wouldn't be any better than it is now because there's such a fast motion going on here. But here's my reasoning, is that he flips up the gun and then he gets into position and there's that hold on the gun and then the gun drops. So I feel like we don't want to draw the eye into many different places at that same time. It might be cool to feel the gun drop as he starts his movement and get the gun kind of out of the way. The gun has now fallen and settled. So we don't have to worry about it's going to come down. I want to, my eye is going to go there because it's about to come down. It's done. The gun is over. And now we just have just have this guy and then potentially the bug to worry about which is much easier to, to track your eyes back and forth additionally if you wait until right about here there's no more eyes on the screen and we as an audience will always look at a character's eyes occasionally we'll look to where they're looking which will come back in a second but we're going to look at their eyes first and so here there's no eyes on screen which gives me as an audience member a moment to be okay to move my eyes around the frame. I am more willing to take my eyes off of him. And he's only got his back turned for a couple frames. So that's why I'm saying I don't know that this is gonna work that much better, but it's my suggestion. But if right here, as his head is going around this way, and he's no longer facing us, that's when the bug enters. And it might be just enough to have like he's also turning this direction because it kind of throws our eye to screen left too. Um, it might be just enough to get our eye to see the bug enter and then go back to him as he gets into this jump and hold in midair, which would be a great kind of like bing, bang, boom, the um, ping, ping pong back and forth of your eye, which is a little bit stronger between those two places than currently where it is um, with, in my opinion, kind of three places. Uh, and so that's my suggestion. I don't know if it would work, but it would be very easy to just change the timing of how it enters to try it and see. Okay, so then let's get to the part that's really awesome right here. This is working masterfully. I love it. That right here, this is where I did start to notice the bug the first time through. And that is right here as he comes to a hold. He is just kind of frozen in his pose, which is awesome while the bug does a very quick movement across the screen and draws our eye at the same time his eyes go down to look at it and so even if we did happen to be looking still at his eyes when the bug does that big movement his eyes make us look where he's looking which is what i mentioned before their eyes are on screen so we're going to look at them first but then we see that he notices something so we look to see what he notices not only that but you've got the gun pointing at it You've got his eyes pointing at it. You've got all these lines of the hat pointing at it. You've got this arm kind of pointing at it. Uh, you've got obviously this arm pointing at it. This is aimed at it. And this, if it were a little bit smoother, is kind of taking our eye into this line, which then aims at it. It's all just like, look over here. And it's working so beautifully. I think it's really cool. And it sells that moment just right. All right, um, and then oh, what I was saying about this, this shape right here is that there's a little bit of a kink in this shape, and so it does that, and it's not super clean. I think if you were to, to push things around a little bit and get like this sort of thing, it would be a little cooler. It's mostly just about this line right here, making that a little bit smoother. All right. Uh, Oh, and then another thing while we're on this pose, another thing about this pose is there's a, a little bit of a weirdness to this right here, that there's this dip and then his arm. And I would try to link up one arm to the other across the back of his shoulders so that this arm goes into this arm. So basically, basically be taking like this. Oops, that is really dark there. Getting that shape filled in there and it would be less down here then 
raising that arm up so that it crosses, that line is consistent across his back, basically. All right. So those are my two major concerns, is the timing of the bug entrance and the beginning texture. Everything else is going to be focused on getting a little bit more weight or timing or uh, sharpening the timing or getting a little bit more polish in there. So let's jump into that part of it. Now, um, one really cool thing, and this is a general note, but this isn't where I'd start with polish. It's a general note is one really cool thing about having a giant object parented to the head is that it really highlights any time that the head motion isn't super polished because you can feel that object um, really kind of jump in spacing or hit a wall really hard because that object is inheriting all the motion from the head. So let's see if we can find a really, actually right there, it's maybe a really good place to show it, is that the head is inheriting all the motion from the head but amplifying it. And so like this point right out here, that's not a good color to use, this point right out here is getting all that motion amplified. Kind of like if a character is holding a sword or something and way out the tip of the sword is having any tiny motion in the wrist really amplified. And so you can tell very quickly how polished that is by the tip of that object. So the tip of the hat here kind of shows you where the head might be able to be improved, the head motion. And so right at this moment, that the tip of the hat is kind of having tiny spacing gaps up and to the right and then BAM big spacing gap down into the left and so it really kind of bing 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 BAM has a really sharp motion down that's also kind of apparent um, actually right here on the back it's actually more apparent there if you look there yeah so that's coming down and then pops up and this one does that and pops down. Um, actually, any of these pieces you could look at to find those things throughout the shot. And we'll come back to those. Um, actually, one kind of cool thing that you could try on a shot where the character doesn't have a hat is just attach a giant cube to the top of their head. And then you can see where each of those points makes a weird, funny motion change or arc because it's getting amplified by the head. All right, so where I would start with polishing some of this stuff and the, the place that always makes the most sense to me is with the root or the cog or whatever name you want to call his center of gravity or his, his base of his spine or um, what's controlling most of the rest of his body. Now there's a couple places in here that feel a little, little linear. So actually right in here, there's a weird spacing thing. So it's kind of got a linear spacing for a couple frames in here that go down and then back up. There's kind of an evenness to the spacing and then it jumps right there, it pops up. And then it freezes in place, just a slight drift to the left, but for the most part, it has stopped its vertical movement and then snaps back down real fast. But once it does that, it snaps into motion and then has some softening or some um, even frames in the middle where the spacing again feels kind of oops, even and then it softens. And so that you could just take a little pass at the motion of this part right here that I wouldn't have its vertical motion just stop. I would have it slowly change direction and come back down and it's fine to jump into a big spacing gap as long as the frames before it support it. At least I think that would be the best way to handle it here, is that um, would be the best way to describe this. On the way up, no, let's reset that. Basically, if we've got a ball here that is in the same spot and then all of a sudden jumps down like that, I would really recommend instead making it start its motion on the frame before. like that so that there is one frame of it beginning its momentum to get into that giant spacing gap hopefully that makes sense all right and then see this is all working pretty well 
this part gets a little linear in here. So on the way down, his root feels like it's got some linear spacing. I would really exaggerate the up position right here, maybe even do like a straighter leg and hold it up there for a couple extra frames. Maybe it could, let's do a different color, maybe it could stay up here, up here, up here, and then drop down faster after that. So just kind of pushing it a little bit, pushing that spacing so that you hold at the top a little bit longer. It's still slightly coming down, but not as evenly as before. Slightly coming down out of that hold and then let it drop. All right, and then we get to this big punch. So this is where it could use a little extra polish too, that um, it kind of goes straight up here, straight up, straight to the side, really far, and then spins in place. And so if you watch his torso right here, it is staying in the same screen space. And so it kind of feels like there's a big, let's highlight that one too, there's a big spacing gap here. So from 61 to 62, big spacing gap. And then at that point, it kind of like spins as if it's on a spike. Can you feel that? So big movement over and then spins in place as if there's a spike running through the whole spine. And so I would just spread that out a little bit further um, so that this isn't a giant spacing gap here and the spinning happens more across that translation through screen. A lot of the things that we can look at here, you can think about in terms of 2D space, just screen space. Think about as this, if it were a drawing and it was a series of drawings, not necessarily about the curves, but that is a separate and completely valid way to think about it too. But just to highlight a different way of thinking about it is in 2D space, the spine jumps over and then spins in the same spot. All right. Um, you know what, let's take it in sections because that's how I would polish it too. So for this first section before he reacts to the bug, let's back up and talk about a few other things. So how about the legs and the feet? So here you've got the knee, the hip, and the ankle all in a straight line, but the leg is bent. It's bent towards us, but you can't tell. I would really try to avoid having this straight, solid object where everything is aligned when the knee is bent. Um, if it was a straight leg, this could totally work. But because it's bent, I think you want to highlight that it's bent. and so. I would instead, maybe, oh, this would be bent further back, maybe do that. I think that would work a little bit better. It's kind of hard to see. Let's switch to a different color. Um, yeah, I think that'd be better. And then maybe I would move this one a little bit or just at least be cautious of this area in here and, met, and not um, overlap them, which I did in my first version of the drawing, so that there's a little bit of separation there. And then even if that meant that this foot was kind of bent, like the ankle was bent. So instead of having the this from the front view, is that the toes would be kind of the same, but the ankle would be bent, if that makes sense the ankle would be twisted over a little bit. Uh, the toes would still be flat, the ball, the foot might still be flat, but the ankle would be kind of bent to the side to blend into the angle of that leg a little bit better. And actually, while we're on that topic, that brings me to another point. It feels like often the, the toe, the ball of the foot, and the ankle are all aligned in the same way that I talked about the, the hip, the knee, and the, the ankle. And so going back to like, this, this drawing here um, for the foot, the, the more you can make it feel like these pieces kind of bend and separate a little bit and they don't feel as super rigid and CG as everything staying in the same exact axis, the more organic it's gonna feel. So like right here, in fact, right, right here, 
this is another straight line, but is I think his toes are bent. I might try and get a little bit more angle on that. Um, but here, like when you land, so same thing again, when you land, it feels like it's all working in one axis for the ankle coming down or for the heel coming down rather. And so then again, from the front view, it feels like, let's say this is the contact pose. And then oops, I'm going to switch colors. This is where it settles, right? So from the front view, kind of hard to tell, but like the toe and the ball have hit, but the ankle's still up high and then the ankle comes down and it feels like it's all in one single axis. So if instead you had it so that it felt like it contacted here and then ended up in here, then it feels like there's more organic quality to it, that it's not locked into one CG axis that is um, only going in a straight line. There's some, the way that it lands is coming in like that instead of like this. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, then what's next here? Okay, so in terms of polish for the feet, not only on those, the times where you're landing like that, but also when starting this motion, like here, um, same thing, I would bend the ankle a little bit more, twist rather, twist the ankle a little bit more to blend into the shape of the leg. And then also right here, you've got this straight to camera shape, but I know that the, the heel is lifting and the toe is bent. Um, so I would avoid that if possible. Add a little bit of depth to it. Turn it one way or the other a little bit so that we can see more depth so that it doesn't feel, or change the angle of the ankle so it doesn't feel like it is one straight solid shape like that to camera. And then also it feels like a lot of times you could use a little bit more ease into some of the movements. For example, right here, both feet lift up at the exact same frame. They're planted, they're planted, and then they lift together right here. Offsetting one by even a frame will do a lot to help it feel more organic. But then also maybe keeping one toe on the ground, but lifting the ankle, whereas the other one, the whole foot lifts off. And this is just the ankle, but the toe stays planted. That can help. Um, and then Watch out for this knee pop. So you've got this bent, this bent, and then it straightens right there over one frame, and then it freezes right there. It's not changing shape anymore. I would see what I could do here to blend into that a little bit better. In fact, let's take this opportunity here to redraw this a little bit. Delete this one, delete that and delete this and we're just going to steal the colors <laughs> and that's not working all that great but my intention was to show that even just thinking of it in terms of 2d that's a little bit better That works a little bit better. So that line in 2D continues to move. Does that make sense? All right. Then as he, as he starts into this move, everything goes down at the same frame. His head goes down, his arms go down, his shoulders go down. I would try to break that up a little bit. Maybe lead with the head, but keep the, the hands up higher. Could even lead with the chest, but keep the hands up higher so that they are favored more towards what they were on the previous frame. There's a little bit more drag. Um, 
even though the head is leading down and the chest is leading down, the arms stay up for an extra frame and then come down, which would be cool. Also, it just feels like his head kind of pops into there. I think that you could probably blend a little bit more, have another frame of ease into that motion. Maybe here it needs to not be as, that's probably better, not as bent not as knotted upwards and then he hits a wall here and in fact it's kind of pinned like imagine there is a nail being hammered into him right there and across these two frames Right? It's like, it's attached right there. There's a, a nail going through the frame that's holding him in place. And he's pivoting off of that spot. So I would keep that moving, keep it translating a little to the right during that spot. All right, and then here, I think it would be really cool if, I like the, the multiples, by the way, I think that's fun. But I think you're losing some power by not having this be like a straight leg. That'd be cool. And then maybe you could even have this a little bit more aligned, but also smear it even further. Let's color that in. Like that. I think that'd be cool. I think it's getting a little bit more power by having it straight. Maybe you could even keep it straight for another frame. I think that would work. And then here on the spacing to get down, this feels very even. So currently, what you have is here, 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 here. And so if we scrub through those, or, or maybe if we turn this on, oops, no, ah, I'm gonna use the mouse instead. There, it feels like it's a little bit even. It's not precisely even, but it, it does feel like it's a little bit even. You could um, favor, let's turn that off again, here by maybe having it, just pushing that spacing a little bit to aim towards the floor there and then contact there. I think that would be good. Like you have it, so this frame works. But just leave with that one a little bit more favoring towards the ground. And then, um, oh, one small thing I forgot, the gun on the way down the spacing is a little bit off. It, it it has to do with the spinning, I think. It's it's throwing you off. Um, right there, yeah. So placement in frame. Let's get something easier to see. And now turn that back on. Ah. Use the mouse again. So if you look at the purple spacing, it's kind of all over the place. And I think it has to do with the spinning because as it's spinning, it's throwing off the axis on which it's moving um, in terms of like the actual CG way that it's being handled. Uh, so you might have to force it and counter animate it to the spinning so that, or separate them, like attach it to a locator that handles the translation while the gun controls itself for doing the spinning or something like that so that you can really make the spacing do what you want it to do, which would be probably, you know, classic ball bounce would be increasing spacing on the way down to where the contact is. Uh, yeah, right now it's a little bit scattered. Like here there's a cluster, here there's a cluster, and then these get kind of even. 
All right, let's go back here. All right. Um, oh, and then here, this foot dropping is a little bit soft. You could probably sharpen that and have an extra frame earlier. So here, it could already be contacting and maybe a straight leg. And I already drew a straight leg there. All right. And I think because we're using the orange one to delay the cog or the root, I think I would also probably delay the foot and maybe even bend it more. I think that'd be cool. This one's not working. This one's gonna have to come down a little bit more. Oh wait, let me see the cog. Oh, well, that cog doesn't work either. It's gotta be a little bit lower. Yeah. All right, and then So here you could reach that foot out if you wanted and then contact there. I think that works. Although I wouldn't do that. I might do that instead. I think that works with the flow of his body a little bit better. You could try pushing that one to be opposite. And actually that shape change could work too. You could try it. I don't, I'm not positive on it, but maybe if it's bending out like this and then you have it as the weight settles, it actually comes in like this because there it's feeling much better. All right. And then here's another case where I think things are just uh, needing to ease a little bit more on the foot. So here it's frozen, right? Frozen, frozen, pop, big spacing pop. So again, if we just, maybe this will be a better example of doing some color changes here. Oh, let me erase that. Can erase that? So if we start moving the foot, yeah. So hopefully you can see there that it's feeling like that little bit of ease helps it a little bit, not feel like a pop. And an alternative solution would be that you could actually just take this one and stretch it as well. Try that. Um, maybe even like stretch this whole block of color. Nah. That's a little bit better, but nah, don't do that. Change my mind. All right, and then this shape is a little bit broken. All right, but I think you're fighting the rig a little bit here. You're pushing it to extremes. This doesn't quite work. I'll try and get that. And if that leg is bent, I'm not actually sure. I would bend it. So here, this would be bent too, if that's the case. All right, and then it bends into this, which is nice. And we talked about that. All right, so that's where I would start, cog and feet. Let's go back to um, arms in this part. And maybe we won't do it this detailed through the entire shot. Because um, you'll be able to repurpose these ideas throughout the rest of the shot. All right, so then arms. So it might be nice if Number one, for this pose that you settle in, I probably would keep the thumb out of the silhouette of the arm. It's kind of cluttered right now. I would just lift it up a little bit like you have here, but I wouldn't change the rest of the hand, just the thumb I would bring up to separate a little bit more. I would also do a little bit of an overshoot here. Um, actually, while we're on this part, the spacing of the wrist here is fairly even. Also, 
now that I'm flipping those back and forth, he's kind of pinned here as well. As if there's that nail in him, right? All right, anyway, back to the wrist. Kind of even through there, so I would just push the spacing by holding this back a little bit. Let's move a little faster through there, there, which is good. And then maybe here, what about an overshoot? Still moving a little bit slow. Might sharpen that up just a bit. Maybe taking this one and move that one back too. Like that. That might work better. Just to sharpen it up a bit and have a little bit of that overshoot to come back to settle, which would be nice. Let's look at the other arm. I like the smear here. I think it's a cool idea, but I would also aim those fingers to where they came from instead of having them out like that. And then here, I think you could simplify the shape a little bit. Maybe make it like that. Right now, it's a little cluttery and there's like too many shapes going on. The fingers are separated. There's some gaps in between um, in a way that's not really supporting some of these ideas. And I think just closing the gap and making it a little bit more of a, a cleaner shape of all of those pieces will help. And then here the wrist and the chest and head are all synced together and with kind of even spacing. So I'll just delay that a little bit, maybe Let the wrist, that's too high. Do that, then. Another thing that happened accidentally here is that the overshoots are on different frames, which is good. I wasn't looking at that or preparing for it, but it happened. So that this one overshoots here, and then this one overshoots there which will be nice to separate them a little bit. I think you're already doing that a little bit on how they settle. Yeah, you've already got them offset a little bit, which is great. I think that's working. I'm just saying in my new drawings, I also happen to make that happen, which is good a good thing to look for too, so that they don't feel like they're synced together on a rubber band or something. All right, so we already talked about delaying the hands here for consistency, I'll make those purple. There's a little bit of a weirdness in the spacing of this wrist because it comes in this way and then jumps up that way and then holds and then goes that way. And there's a little bit of a weirdness to that arc and the spacing in there. I'll just kind of simplify that. Um, and then when you get into, where is it? Oh, right in here, things are kind of even again and it's, kind of related to the cog coming down evenly, which we already talked about, but this um, wrist up here is very attached to the chest, right? You feel that they're moving together in sync. Could be cool here is actually an overshoot. Might be nice. Straighten that out. Leave it up. Drag a little bit more and then get into what you've got. You know what? I accidentally drew that kind of even as well. So we hold it back even further in this screen space. And then this one has to change too. And then it goes a little bit faster to get into here, which will be cool. And then just watch the spacing on that arc because it comes down here and then just goes up. So maybe this pose should be a little bit more out here just so that it, it travels on that path instead of that path. Like that. All right. Um, Okay, 
I know it looks like oh, there's a lot of drawings in here, it's, um, but it's covering a lot of very specific things that you can then propagate to the rest of the shot. All right, let's look at a few other places. And then there's a couple other things that I want to look at as well. Um, one thing is, uh, think about the, the multiples that you're doing here, which are really cool, is that you can use them to show the spacing that we don't see. So like here, and here, and here, it actually feels like it's kind of even, because it's there and there. And that feels like the distance and spacing is fairly even. So what I would suggest is to use the multiples to show the spacing that isn't actually there. And so if this hand is going to be here, maybe this one should be more like here. And so then previous frame is like here. So then we've got an increase in spacing from here to here, and then from there to there. Right? <clears throat> and so I think that, that that would be a cool way of showing the ramp up of speed of that hand without actually having the frames to do it. You're huddling them all into one frame uh, or, or two frames here instead of having three frames to do it. All right, and then the, the jumping backward is all awesome. I think that's all really cool. Um, we talked about the strength of that pose, which is working really nicely. I love the, the squash that you've got going on in the head and the face. I think that's really cool. It does feel a little bit stuck. I would start um, stuck in screen space. So the shape is good, but I would probably move the head back a little bit more while doing it. It's kind of a useless drawing. Doesn't make any sense, but uh, hopefully me explaining why would help. Uh, and then this stuff is all really cool. There's a couple other things that I want to talk about in here. The, the shooting is all great. As we get into this drag here is really fun. How he's aimed like that, that's super cool. What I think doesn't quite work is that then he comes across like this and his head is actually going on more of a straight line, which is what I would suggest. It's the arc of the hat that makes it feel like he's leaning one way and then overshoots really far the other way and I think that the lean back and the drag is really fun but then his uh, grabbing the gun should be very um, directional very intentional and in a straight line and so to solve that I would just try to remove the hat going um, way out to the side like this or this feeling it's creating with this big arc and instead just cheat the hat to be a little bit more in front of him like this if you can. These aren't great drawings, but um, that will prevent it from feeling like he arcs way out to the side to pick up the gun when he's already leaning way far back this way. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, there was a spot in here, right here. The hat is becoming just a box. And so I would always try to have like maybe the underside visible and this top side visible at the same time um, for some organic feeling or you could just have it flip up a little bit more but right now because of the box feeling I would try to avoid that frame All right this this works well you could maybe simplify the curve of this part here but I would avoid the box and then I think this is all good there was one note I had in here about maybe showing the elbow because I think he's bending his elbow away from us away from camera like that and just pull it down so we can see the elbow in there somewhere or maybe it's like that I think that stuff's all good but when he stands up the weight isn't quite working yet and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the cog or the root comes up and then just goes straight across through all of this. You don't feel that up and down, you don't feel that settle into the weight as he puts his foot down and lands on a new foot. Additionally, this leg is still bent, and I think that you would raise him up a little higher to get that leg straight. And then here, raise him up a little higher to get that leg straight, um, so that it doesn't feel like he's crouched. Through here, it kind of feels like he's squatting because both legs are bent while he's stepping over to the side. 
Um, I think you could improve this end hand pose. It's kind of evenly spaced out fingers, right? And I think instead um, you could kind of contour, oops, contour the body a little bit. So that it feels like it's it's kind of wrapping down around and also get the fingers together and down on his hip or over his belt so that they aren't just straight out because it doesn't feel like it's contacting anything when it looks like this. But if it's a little bit more like that, I think that can work a little bit better. Um, with, I mean, my drawing here is a little too simplified, but um, within that, you could also pull out the index finger if you'd prefer. Um, instead of one giant shape to have the, the slight separation there. All right, and then in terms of performance of the end, there's just a little bit of polishy thing that I think would help sell the weight of this and the performance is right here. I think he um, looks back up too soon. I would keep his head down during more of the brush off, then look up. So just an extra like two or three frames before looking up. And then there's something about the way that the head moves over and does the blow off the, the the barrel of the gun that doesn't quite feel like it's got the weight that it should. I think that you could do a little bit more of a and less of a I think that the way that the head moves up is causing it to feel like it's not selling what you're trying to sell. Um, so I just twist and push and you could use this this pucker shape and try and push it past the silhouette of the face. It's kind of contained within the silhouette of the face and that's a good opportunity to really push away and out um, and break the edge of the silhouette with that shape. All right, and then let's look real quick at the face. So there's the, f the face is not the highlight of the shot. This is a full body shot from far away, so there's not a lot of detail I'm gonna go into, but um, it's worth taking a look real quick because you put the effort into it. So here, both eyebrows are kind of doing that. And so it's not the most appealing shape to have both of them doing that. I might suggest having one a little flatter and the other one like that, kind of leading up that way um, I think having man, this one flatter across there actually let me just grab the color because like that and maybe having that one not quite as extreme will help And then you could probably squash the face more here. Um, an extra 30% of just like squeezing everything. Brows come down, cheeks go up, face puffs out. I think would be cool. I think this is all working really nicely. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. It's working really well. <laughs> the hold here and the eyes darting down is good. That works great. I love the extremes you're going to in here. I think this is super cool, really appealing mouth shape. The, the cheeks get a little sharp. If there is a way to puff them up a little bit, that might help, but I don't know if you have that control in the rig. Here the mouth gets a little boxy. The things you were doing earlier were more successful, like right here, this is a really cool shape. Mouth gets a little boxy in that area. This is getting cooler. I did not draw over it well, <laughs> but that's a cool shape. I think it's working pretty well. This one's nice, this one's better. Let's just delete that drawing. This is a good shape. All right, and then be careful of losing his eyes too much. You could cheat them up to be a little bit higher. You could also stretch out his eyes a little bit more elongated right here because he's moving so fast and make sure to include the pupils. Um, that stuff's all cool. 
Oh, and there's one other part right here that just needs a little bit of fine tuning is the way that he does the double take. I think the change of direction in the twist of his head is too sharp, uh, especially here at 147. And then kind of everything starts moving at the same time to get from 152 to here. Maybe you could lead with the head a little bit more, but keep the eyes back at what he was looking at for an extra second. Not second, <laughs> extra frame or two. And I think you could really push this idea that you have here of the cheeks sort of thing. Um, you're going like 60% of the way there, push it up to like 90, 100% of the way just to, because again, the face isn't a highlight here, so really push it because it's not a close up. So you have some extra room to play with uh, where you can make the face more exaggerated because the camera's further back. And then also right here, be careful of hiding the pupil behind the nose. I might change his head angle just a little bit so that it's not hidden. When his eyes look down, you can bring the brows down further as well. Oops. Whoa, that's huge. Like that. I think that works a little bit better. Yeah, allow his lids to come down with his eyes. And then you would uh, have them come back up with the pupils as well when he starts to look back up. And then right here, same thing. This would kind of be solved by my previous note of the lift up with the nose doesn't quite work to sell your idea. If you remove that, maybe we'll see his pupil, which would be good to, to get us to see both eyes at the same time. And then right here at the end, a similar sort of note before, maybe bring the lids down. And I think you'd increase that feeling of confidence if you um, flatten his lids. Like that. I think he feels a little bit more pleased with himself, a little bit more confident and cocky, which would be a nice contrast to obviously his earlier screaming and running from the bug. And then this feeling of like, yeah, I did that. You saw it. All right, so I think I think I hit everything that I wanted to talk about, um, including a couple other things, but uh, that I found along the way. I hope this is helpful. And yeah, I, it's really cool. <laughs> so none of these things uh, devalue it as a shot. It's already really fantastic. These are just little ways to push it that extra 10% to get that polish and uh, give it a little bit more attention to detail. But again, you did a fantastic job on this one with not only the concept uh, and selling it really well, but also a really entertaining change of emotional state and um, uh, excellent changes of timing and posing is really cool and uh, a really good job working out the choreography of all this stuff, which is very challenging. Um, there's that one moment I had thought that it could improve where our eye is tracking, but other than that, you're doing a really awesome job, especially um, selling where to look, right? Awesome stuff. Uh, nice job, and um, hopefully this helped. Thank you for the honor of letting me give some feedback. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.